So you want to be careful, obviously. The AMD chips have pins on the bottom. I'll just flip it over, give a quick inspection to be sure everything looks okay as far as no bent pins. And we will take the lever here on the board, flip it up, we'll drop our processor into place. It falls right in, wiggle it a little bit just to be sure that it's in there nicely, and it is. And then we'll just simply close the door back. And that's it. Our processor is installed. We just want to go ahead and install the cooler. So we want to be sure that we install this in the direction that we want it installed, which has everything facing the AMD facing upside right when your case is being mounted, which is what we have here. And we have our two mounting brackets here already pre-installed. Okay, there is no plastic or nothing to peel back off of this. So that's a good thing. You want to be sure that your lever on your heat sink is in the proper position, which is uh, the loose position, which gives it more uh, play to hook into your bracket here that's on the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and just set this on here nice and easy. Like this. And then we'll hook in, I'll hook in this side onto the bracket. Okay, so what you what you may have to do once you get one side hooked into the, the clip is you have to push down pretty hard to get this another clip to come down over the retention bracket there. But uh, once you have it clipped into place, then there is a retention there's a retention handle here that you just flip. There we go. That tightens her up on there really nicely right there. So our, so our uh, heat sink is now firmly on the motherboard. All right, and let's not forget the most important thing here, guys. We're gonna hook up our CPU fan. That's gonna go right here. Okay, when you get this cooler, you will notice there are two little small rubber doors. I think on the original Wraith cooler, they only have one. But you want to remove the little rubber doors, the little rubber covers, and don't drop them down there like I just did. Little tiny little guy there. All right, and there's another one here. So what that does is that exposes uh, uh, a four pin port and a three pin port and AMD provides you with two cables okay and one of these is an RGB cable and that is the four pinned end that's going to go into one of these the four pin port and then one of them is a USB cable and that is a three pin which will go into the three pin port. Just plug this guy in. Get that to snap in there pretty good. That's in there pretty good there. And then we have the four pin RGB. Which we'll put that in here. Just be sure that you've got the correct orientation. You want to plug the RGB on this board, there is a LED CPU header, but if you get the wrong end, there's an arrow on the connector, but there's no markings there on the LED 
CPU to show whether it goes this way or that way. So I do know with the RGBs that you can't hurt anything if you put it on backwards. But just in case, I uh, did check the manual and it's looking like the pin to the far left if you're reading the writing that says LED CPU on the board correctly, the very left pin is the 12 volt. And that is clearly marked on the end of this cable. So we will plug that in accordingly. And what the LEDs do here, they do give you a little extra cables to worry about, you know, as far as cable management goes. But I will plug that in to that RGB header there. Get that plugged in like so. So the other cable is a USB cable. Then we're just going to plug that into an available USB port here. That's going to give us our control over the RGBs themselves. Uh, but, you know, the only unfortunate thing about that is that it does take up one of your USB 2... I mean, one of your... Yeah, one of your USB 2.0 headers. Uh, which is a shame because they only provide you with two USB 2.0 headers on this board. So that leaves you with one, but you can buy a hub for this that you can connect more USB uh, ports to there. You're left with all of this fun stuff to deal with, cable management stuff there. They give you the option of using either the USB or the RGB, you don't have to use both and don't use both because if you do, basically the cooler will only recognize the RGB header and not the USB. You can go and download the Cooler Master Wraith Prism RGB controller app that would allow you to change the colors and such only through, only through the USB header. So I do believe that I am going to now eliminate the RGB, which is good, a good thing, I think, simply because, wow, you already have a cable for your power of your AMD CPU fan, and then you have a RGB cable, and you're going to have a USB cable. Nope, you don't have to have all three. You don't, and the only one you really want is the USB cable. Once again, I'll say it's unfortunate that they take up a whole USB 2.0 a header for that. There are options to have splitters that will expand to give you more USB 2.0 headers. So we're just going to unplug the RGB. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and install our RAM. So Gigabyte recommends you installing your memory into slots one and two. That's the first slot here and then the middle slot, two slots up, one and two. Get that installed on this side, on there, on there, very nice. So that's slot number two, this is slot number one. Okay, they're both installed in there firmly. Okay, here we go, here's one of the stars of the show. Oh boy, this is the RTX GeForce 2080 EVGA Black Edition. That's going to be what's going to be powering our graphics on this motherboard. So very nice card and actually at the time of this video, very expensive card. And the potential of this card has yet to be unlocked. But we're going to crack it open right here for the first time. Very interesting how the box has one flat corner here. I guess that's supposed to be um, a, I don't know, clever or different design that EVGA is using there. 
but this is a very nice card. Pull it out nice and easy. All right, set that aside there. Let's open her up here, see what we got, see what the presentation's like. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, very nice. A little small installation guide there for you. A brief description. And I mean, let's pull this guy out. Pull this out. There we go, like that. Woo! You know what? This card is heavier than I expected for sure. Set this down here for a second. Let me just pull this insert out just to be sure I'm not missing anything. Nope, that's it. That's how she comes. The card is definitely heavier than I anticipated for sure. Oh, a little bit of a plastic cover shroud here. Never seen that before. Wow, I am telling you. That is a heavy card. Very, extremely heavy card. Uh, remove protective film before use. You think so? Let me zoom in on that some more. So we'll just remove the protective film. Take that off. Uh, you know what I do like about this, though, is the clear... Um, plastics that they use on this. I don't know where that came from. Wow. Very nice. Very nice card indeed. I love the clear plastics that they use on this. Here's your back plate. Oh man. Wow. Just a really sweet card. Really is. Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. So with this in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get this up on a little small box and we're going to do it out of the box boot. Fire it up for the first time. Let's see how it goes. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you head right down below here, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. That would be really awesome. I have much more computer repair videos coming your way. There's also a bell you can click for to get notifications for my videos. I really appreciate everybody's support. And as usual, everyone, until next time, see you soon.